Hi, I'm Tim Caprissa, the media columnist at OnMilwaukee.com. Welcome to On Media, where every week we look at issues in the media. And today we're at AJ Bomber's, a hamburger place, which you wouldn't think would be a media story, but thanks to its owner, Joe Sorge, it's become a media story. Joe, this all sort of began with Twitter. You know what, it did. Uh, we have been kind of a social media clubhouse uh, for Milwaukee, but it, it did start with Twitter. It was something that I realized almost by accident. Someone had mentioned Twitter to me. I did a little search for one of our restaurants, uh, found someone discussing that matter, engaged with them a little bit really just by saying thank you uh, when I realized that she came back with a few more comments and I didn't really know much about Twitter and so I saw that she had 400 followers. And so quick math, I said, wow, she just spoke to that many people about her experience. This is something I should probably be taking pretty seriously. How long ago was that? That was about uh, February of uh, 2009. And you now how have how many Twitter followers? Well, uh, for our AJ Bombers account, yes. we have a little over 7,000 followers. Um, but that happens in a unique way. So one day in this, in this very booth, actually, um, there is a very um, popular social media columnist and blogger and typist, as he likes to call himself, named Chris Brogan, uh, who was coming to Milwaukee. And, and truth be told, I probably didn't understand the gravity of the situation at that point. Uh, he had mentioned coming to Milwaukee. And I said, hey, if you're coming to Milwaukee and you're in need of some sustenance, here are some options. Bombers, Swig Milwaukee, and Water Buffalo. And uh, he responded with, hey, I'm, I'm actually just right around the corner. Followed me, sent me a DM. We end up meeting here on a Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And really, innocently enough, sat down to have a, a beer and some peanuts and just sort of enjoy the place. And when I started to tell my story, he decided to pull out his camera and say, hold on a second, this is pretty intriguing. And he started to notice a little bit of the at signs and the twit feedy, as we call it, on the walls. Uh, so he pulled out his camera, asked me to tell my story much in, in this way, uh, and then published that story on his blog. So it sat on the front page of his blog for a while, but it also just so happened that he was named, uh, I believe there, there's a very popular website, I want to say Social Media Explorer, had named him the world's number one social media blogger the very next day. So lots of traffic that saw sort of our story in my face, and it really spread very, very quickly. So almost by coincidence, that was absolutely talking to him that the impact was magnified. It absolutely was, and and so that exposure in social media brought us traditional media, um, and then more traditional media coverage brought us more social media coverage, which brought us things like the Travel Channel. Well, let's talk about the traditional media coverage. Sure. New York Times, correct? Well, yes. Uh, you know, I, I'm probably one of the only people I know who, who can say my first interview was with the Wall Street Journal. That was <laughs> very strange and odd. And, and that interview had to do with uh, our use of Foursquare um, as a tool to drive sales. Because I really didn't realize at the point, you know, even, even using Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and Ustream and all of these tools, the key for me was I was just using them as a user. Right. Literally head down, having fun, playing with my customers, and then I saw my customers really building this sort of huge amount of data about the restaurant, almost almost personalized reviews. Well, in creating, in a sense, an effect, a community. Uh, oh, absolutely. That's absolutely the case. And again, it was so, uh, uh, it was so organic and so natural. I really was just participating and engaging with them and we all came together to learn about so many new media tools and new social tools together and how they worked for their businesses and their personal life that that community just continued to grow. Now uh, you went from the traditional media, you, you and uh, one of your competitors, uh, Sobelman's, became the target <laughs> of a rivalry that turned right. into uh, uh, Food Wars, the Food Network show, which has not yet aired. It has not, no. Uh, how did, how did how did you get Travel Channel interested in you? Uh, so Dave Sobelman was aware of this show, Food Wars. And one day he picks up the phone and calls me and says, hey, do you know about this show, Food Wars? And I said that I did. Uh, I'd like to challenge you to a war, but I don't really have any ins with the network. So maybe you could use these tools you've developed to get their attention and get them here. Which sounded, you know, a little bit outlandish, but, but truthfully, it was a fun challenge. And so I then turned to our Twitter audience and our Facebook audience and said, hey, here's what's happened. Our competitor uh, has, has asked us and challenged us to participate in this show. Let's get the attention of the Travel Channel and the Food Wars show specifically and see if we can get them to Milwaukee. Uh, and sure enough, it worked. I mean, it, it happened very quickly. It Probably did. from the day, the first day that he called, 
to one month, we had shooting dates and you know all of those plans in place. Now, the piece that's probably not as well known is I, I was able to actually get in touch with Sharp Entertainment, who is the production company, and that's really what made it happen. But uh, as far as the actual scheduling part, but the exposure totally came right. from this same community that we just refer that we just referred to. It a was very a loyal community, absolutely, who cheered you along on Twitter as the actual competition was being taped. I, but then they're so well trained. Stop short of saying who won. I I am still uh, so unbelievably thankful that it has happened that way. Surprised too, but very thankful. I mean, you're right. It's a very tight knit community. And, and I think that applies to Milwaukee altogether, but this social media group is very tight-knit. There was about 500 of us at the competition that day. And yeah, they, they told us all that, that we couldn't participate, that we couldn't, uh, not that we couldn't participate, but that we couldn't reveal the winner. Right. And that if we were to reveal the winner, it would have, it would, the net effect would be that the show may not air, A, and B, if it did air, it would air at the very, very end, because we had so much fun with the Travel Channel, they were very excited to put it towards the beginning of the season. So, yeah, it, it really speaks to sort of their loyalty in that, in that community. And you have not been given an air date yet for the Milwaukee show. Uh, the only thing I know as of today is that uh, they are going to start airing Food Wars episodes on August 18th. Okay. That's all I know at this point. Uh, I wish that I could say that I knew more. Um, sometimes the participants are the last to know. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> now, the next chapter was that Travel Channel experience has led to another taping here by the Travel Channel. It did. Over the weekend. It did. And that was? Uh, so that was last Wednesday, an email from uh, a woman named Atalia from a show called Best Places I've Ever Been. And that show's concept is a collection of all of the Travel Channel's hosts submitting their favorite places to go around the country as they've traveled. And one of those hosts submitted uh, AJ Bombers as their uh, favorite burger place. So there's a, a show centered and focused around burgers. Mm -hmm. um, and specifically, they were here for our unique toppings, like the berry burger, the peanut butter bacon cheeseburger, as well as our unique veggie burger, our stuffed mushroom. So, yeah, that it's it was I was as surprised as anyone, and it happened very quickly. Uh, she notified me on Wednesday, and they were scheduled to shoot Friday, and then obviously we had some flooding Thursday night, mm -hmm. so they couldn't get in from Minneapolis, so they came back on Sunday. Now, one thing that's really key here is that despite all of your social media work, your marketing, your self-promotion, you got to have a good product. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, people <laughs> keep coming back, correct? I, mean, I would not have... So, I, I've never opened a, a burger restaurant in my life. I don't have any history in burger restaurants in, in me growing up or being involved in restaurants since, since I have been 11 years old with my family. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if we were going to try this, we actually needed to create what I considered and my wife considered to be the best burger that you've ever tasted. And so we set out to do exactly that. And it was a very long process, and it, and it required lots of research. Um, but, but you're right, that, that's what happened. We created a burger first. I mean, the restaurant was open before all the media exposure came. It just so happened that you know this great product that was out there has lots of people coming back and, and makes it easy to sort of uh, to sort of come here and, right. and have a good time and participate. Right, and key, obviously, with the community that you've created, is those people have to keep coming back. <laughs> they can't just come once. Those right. 500 people can't right. come once. No, they absolutely can't. Well, that's great. You're, it's a great story for small businesses on how to use social media to attract conventional media and also sell a product. Thank you. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for talking to us today. Well, that's it for this episode of On Media. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Stick around to see some of the other offerings available on my TV home, Wisconsin On Demand.